first week in March here in Alaska and that means that it is time to start seeds. We have all this stuff laid out and we're going to take you along and show you some of the first seeds that we're going to be starting. So let's first show you what seeds we have. I have all our seeds organized by the order that they are planted. I wanted to show you three seeds, three different companies that we're going to be using this year. The first is our beloved territorial seed company. They're absolutely wonderful company. We lived in Cottage Grove, Oregon, and that is where territorial is based. So a lot of our seeds you're gonna see are predominantly territorial. Next, I am trying MI Gardener. And lastly, we've got seeds from Alaska. It's called Denali Seed Company. Gardening in Alaska is new to us. We are from where the zone was 8B, and we are now in a zone that is 3B. So it's quite a bit of a difference. So I did have to do some research as to figure out these starting dates. And I did buy this little book from Denali Seed Co. It's been really helpful for me. The other thing that's really tricky is depending on where you live in Alaska, the light, you have a lot more light. And so that can affect the plants that you're growing. So the first thing we have to do is get some soil into these seed trays. So I don't know if you can see, there is a difference in these seed flats. These were probably a dollar more and they're quite a bit higher quality. You could reuse those for a long time. And these are pretty good. I think we'll be able to use them for a few years, but they're not as sturdy. I'm not finicky on what soil I use to start seeds. Back home, we used to use compost, but we ended up getting this bag of fox farm. And I'm gonna go ahead and get some soil in there. It's nice to have a bin underneath this, but we just wanted to put something so it catches the extra soil. So what I like to do is just go through and poke my fingers in the cells. Otherwise that soil is gonna be too loose in there. And then I usually put some more soil on if I need it. I'm just gonna brush that in. Okay, we got that done, we're gonna head inside. So now that we're back inside, we're gonna get to planting. I'm gonna put celery aside right now and work on the seeds that need heat from the bottom. So let's start with a pepperoncini. So I'm gonna put two pepperoncini seeds in each cell. Last year, we had a little trouble with germination. I think because they were out in our greenhouse and they weren't as warm as they should have been. Generally with territorial, you don't need to plant two. They have an excellent germination rate. If you plant 100 seeds, you'll usually get 100 plants. Another reason we like to plant two is it just increases our chance of choosing a stronger, healthier plant if we see that one's struggling or one's weaker. So we have three different types of bell peppers we're gonna be planting. Bell peppers did pretty well for us in Oregon, especially in the greenhouse. And I wouldn't even attempt it here if we weren't gonna have a plan to have a greenhouse. So they usually need a longer growing season. Hot peppers have always done really well for us in the past and we're adding on a new one this year, Anaheim. So we're gonna grow the most of Serrano's since those are the ones we use the most. On to rosemary. Rosemary is really hard to germinate. It needs to be, I think it's like 80 to 90 degrees to germinate. With these, I like to do a pinch in each cell. Rosemary is an herb that most likely won't overwinter here, which is a bummer. It's probably my absolute favorite herb. So we'll see what happens. We'll try and overwinter them. We may bring them inside. Um, we may just have to grow something like this every year. And then I go back over and just dust some of the soil on top or I get a little more soil to sprinkle it on. You can see my method is extremely precise. So it's never like I get a random seed in a different cell. So these trays when they're heavy duty makes a huge difference because this weighs a lot right now after watering it. Eric went ahead and set up this really cool like seed starting station for us. We've got the bin at the bottom to collect water. <laughs> the peppers and the rosemary need extra heat to germinate. I think that I think that because we're starting them inside the house, we're probably going to keep it hot enough for them to germinate on their own just with the air temp, but I am going to put this seed mat underneath it too and monitor the temperature just make sure it doesn't get too hot. 
So we went ahead and filled up this separate tray. Now we're gonna do celery. And I'm doing celery on a separate tray because it does not need to be kept warm. In fact, you don't wanna keep it that warm at all. Anywhere from like 50 to 70 degrees. Super teeny tiny seeds. So for celery, it is kind of harder to germinate. I do a pinch. I'm just generous with the seed. And what you'll get is you'll get a lot of them germinating in there and you'll divvy them up when it's time to transplant. All in all, I think with three rows, I'm aiming for anywhere from like 50 to 60 plants. Usually we end up having lots of extra. These are only planted at, I think it's like an eighth of an inch, so not much. I'm just gonna kinda scatter that soil around. In our experience, it's just better, I think, to plant a tad bit too deep because the water usually brings the seed back up to the surface. Take the lazy way out and just right over it. We've had these sticks for a year. They actually held up really well in the sun and water. I mean, they did really well. So you can scrub off that and then write a new one on. Bam. So being that we just moved to Alaska in this land here last fall, we don't have anything set up yet. Ideally, we wanna have that greenhouse and we will be building it. And that next year would be where we'd start all these seeds. Last year when we had our greenhouse, we put plastic wrap over the seeds just until they germinated. It works really well to give those plants that extra heat. I think that we're probably gonna be fine without the plastic wrap and it's not even sunny out today. Before I move on to the next step, I put the seeds that I had left back away in a airtight baggie. This is just how I store them when it's the growing season. Next up, let's talk about stratifying. So I have put these wildflower seeds outside to start the stratifying process. Not all flowers, but a lot of perennials benefit from stratifying. And that's basically just where you submit them to colder temperatures and sometimes even moisture in order to encourage them to get going. All I pulled out today was lavender. The rest of them, I'm just gonna put right back outside. They've been outside for about a week and generally you wanna have them outside for at least a month, sometimes longer. Lavender is another finicky herb. You're gonna have better success if you put it through moisture stratification. Not all seeds benefit from moisture stratification, but these ones do particularly. They seem to sprout a little faster. And we're basically just like mimicking what would happen in the wild. I usually put about two spoonfuls, just enough to saturate the paper towel, but not sopping wet in there. I'm gonna go ahead and put these outside. I specifically did not close off the bag. You want it to be able to breathe. And I'm gonna leave them probably outside for a month at least, and then I will go ahead and put them in soil and try to get them to germinate. What you may find happens is they may germinate on their own outside, and at that point that would be a sign to go ahead and get them planted. I'm gonna put the other flowers back out here, and these I'm gonna set out here, and we'll put something on them so they don't blow away. In Oregon, what we did was we put these in our fridge, and that worked really well, but because it's colder here, I'm gonna utilize Mother Nature. So this is what we had to do to keep the cats off this new seeds. 